Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Gabriel. I'm a software engineer at Awake Security. Before I begin, I would like to thank Formation for hosting BayHack, and I'd also like to thank all the organizers who made this happen. So thank you very much. I really enjoy BayHack every year. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, my main site project, which is a programmable configuration file format named DAL. If you're not familiar with it, you can think of it as like JSON plus functions plus types. And in 10 minutes, I can walk through all of those features really quickly. So let me motivate this by beginning with a simple configuration containing some, uh, some information about my system uh, file paths. So for example, I might store what's the path to my public key, so home slash key real SSH, ID, RSA, and then the path to my, sorry, my, no, this is my public key. All right, you want to the font size of it? Oh, yes. Uh, you want me to just make it bigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just a little bit there. Yeah. How's that? Thank you. Okay. And then my home directory, uh, my home directory. So this is an example of a configuration file, which looks sort of like JSON, slightly different syntax. And first off, I just want to be able to marshal it into a Haskell program. So similar to the ESON library, you can derive some classes in order to be able to automatically slurp it in to a Haskell program. Let me make this equally big. Okay. So I would define a Haskell data type, which I'm going to call config. It's going to have three fields, which mirror the fields in the configuration file we, I just authored. And the key magic bit is going to be similar to JSON, a ESON library, deriving generic and deriving interpret, which lets me just slurp my configuration into this Haskell data type, and then show so that I can render it. And now if I want to read it into Haskell, I would type input auto the path to my configuration file and the type of value I expect, in this case, the config record, and it succeeds reading it into Haskell. So very similar to how the ESON library you're familiar with that. And so what's cool about this configuration file format, though, is that it's programmable. So you have features like LED expressions to reduce repetition. And one of the reasons you want to reduce repetition is because it's tedious to write the same thing over and over again but also because you want to make things less error prone because every time you repeat something, copy and paste and tweak, that's, that's an opportunity to introduce error. So I can say, okay, well, I mentioned my home directory three times in this configuration file, so why don't I just use a let binding to define that and then I can interpolate it into these strings like that. Here, I don't even need to interpolate it. And I can verify that it does indeed still produce the same result when I load it into Haskell. And of course, it's got some tooling, so I can, for example, automatically format doll expressions using the doll format utility. And again, there's a little bit more duplication here. So for example, private key and a public key are basically the same. There we go. So now I just reference that here, and the public key is just the private key dot pub. Same result. Oh, sorry, uh, I got I just reloaded everything. Okay, that's fine. Uh, oh, sorry, there's a mistake. Yeah, thank you, whoever pointed that out and I didn't listen to you. <laughs> there we go. All right, but what's cool about uh, dolls is that there's more ways we can reduce repetition. So let's say, for example, I want to have a list of configurations which correspond to different users. What I want to do is just take this and parameterize it on the user. So I'm going to move this config.doll to a make user.doll file. I'm going to turn that into a function, an anonymous function similar to Haskell. So I'll, it's similar syntax to Haskell, except you specify what's the type of the variable you bind. So I say here, it's an anonymous function which takes a user input of type text. I'm going to use that to determine what the home directory would be. Then the way I can reference that in my configuration, if it was just for me, I want to call this make user.doll function on my username, which is Gabriel. I can do so just by referencing the file path. So make user.doll on Gabriel. And this is basically equivalent to the expression stored within that file, which is a function. So now it produces the same result. And because I've got a reusable function stored in a file, I can start mass producing users. So make user.doll, I don't know, Mary. Now this is a different type of value, right? If I try to marshal in right now, I'm gonna get a type error. Says, okay, yeah, you're trying to marshal in. Uh, you're expecting, we're expecting a record, but it's not a record, essentially. 
And so in order to fix that, we just tell Haskell, okay, I'm expecting a list of configs, and then it can marshal it in. Another thing that's really cool is that we can start programmatically generating users. An example would be, um, if you ever use the Nix operating system, you know that it, it automatically generates a set of Nix build users. So like, I'm gonna, it would be like this. So make, it would be as if we wanted to make user.doll Nix build zero, and then make user.doll Nix build one. I wanna do that up programmatically up to Nix build nine. So I wanna create 10 Nix build users. And Doll provides several built-in functions that you can use for doing such these sorts of programmatic transformations. And it also provides a prelude of derived utilities uh, based on those built-in functions. And it's hosted online at these URLs. So here's a URL whose raw text in this case is the generate function. Uh, and I don't expect you to look at to understand what this function is, or even I don't think you can even see what it does at the moment. <laughs> it's just it's there. It's on a, is that a URL? And if we want to understand what that function does, we can actually use the doll REPL. So let me just make that bigger. There we go. So remember how I was able to import a function by a file path? I can do the same thing with URLs. So for example, I just paste the URL into the REPL. It will retrieve, parse, type check it, and return the normal form of that expression, which is what you're looking at right here. Again, I don't expect you to understand what that does, um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bind it to a name which is not necessary, but it's helpful. And this tells us what the type of this generate uh, function is. And this is a type signature that you're looking at here on the bottom. And one way that doll differs from Haskell is that type signatures with fu of functions include the names of function arguments for better documentation. So here you can see this first argument is a natural number whose name is n. Second argument is a type named a. Third argument is a function from naturals to a's named f. And it will return a list of a's. You may be able to guess, either from the name or the type signature, what this function does, but you don't have to guess. Because one thing, cool thing we can do is we can just say, what happens if I generate 10 things? Just tell me. And it says, okay, now you have a function which takes a type and an f, and will apply f on every natural number from zero to nine and return to a list. So one cool feature about doll is you can actually normalize partially saturated functions. This is a strongly normalizing language. So you can explore what things do without having to fully saturate functions in this way. So now we understand very concretely what generate does. I can basically all I have to do is replace f with a function that creates an X build user, and then that's my programmatic set of users. So going back to here, I'm gonna define a function called make nix build. And I can give things types. So for example, I'm gonna define a type synonym for my config type. So for clarity, I'm sorry, what was it? A private key text. This would be like a type synonym in Haskell, except you don't use different syntax for it. It's still just in the left definition. And then we say, okay, and then we can give this a type. So it's, of course it's a type. And make mix build will be a function from the username to a config. And then the way we generate it will be, we call make user.doll on a string nix build, and we're gonna interpolate the natural number, and we're gonna use two built-in functions, integer show, and then natural to integer, and, and I think that will work. I'm just gonna format things again. Sorry, let's see what I'm typing. There. Uh, it failed. Okay. Uh, apologies of parse error. Where's M defined? Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, <clears throat> one well, I don't think the doll. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is the error because I have an incomplete list. There we go. Uh, there we go. All right. And so now we can programmatically. So this is the list concatenation operator. It's not plus plus like in Haskell. Um, that's reserved for concatenating text. And then I'm gonna say, okay, oh, I haven't imported generate yet. So let's just import that. So, and let generate equals that URL. So generate 10 configs using the function make next build. And let's we'll see if that works. Uh, it says, let's see here. Okay, expression does not match annotation. It says, oh, right. It says our function make mixed build 
is it doesn't take a text argument, it takes a natural number as its argument. So this is an example of a type level diff. It's just a point highlighting the part of the type that differed right there. So I can just fix that really quickly. Okay, hopefully this works. There we go, that's our list of 10 next build users. And another nice thing about doll is because um, often you don't want to load a configuration file into Haskell due to like long compile and run times to validate it. So you can also validate it out of band using the doll interpreter, so I, which will basically resolve, parse, type check, normalize the file. So you can do ahead of time validation. And we'll also pretty print it too, so you can read it more easily like this. And that's the end of this presentation. And hopefully that encourages you to try out Doll as for configuring your own Haskell projects. Yeah. Very cool. Um, is there a way to stick that validation into a standard build script so you know that it validates before you produce an executable? And Distribute it and throw it out to your Yeah, I mean, you can run that executable. So that executable automatically type checks as part of everything it does. So it actually, I think it now has a doll type check mode, which is type checking only, if I remember correctly. Uh, sorry, type, but yeah. Um, also, doll actually has a uh, uh, Nix integration. So if you use Nix, you can actually use doll to convert um, doll expressions directly to Nix expressions as part of the build, too. So you get build time uh, confirmation. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so you showed an example of parcel, that partial saturation of uh, functions. Yes. Uh, with positional arguments. Is right. there a way to do that with named arguments? Um, so doll doesn't really have named arguments. It has ordinary functions. Um, and it has functions that can take records. Uh, right. So no, I don't think you can like, it doesn't support um, what's called row polymorphism. So you can't like, you know, you have to basically explicitly declare what's the exact type of the record, what's the exact set of fields that record expects. Okay, is that plan for the future perhaps where I can, maybe a function takes a record and I give it a record with some of the fields and there's a way to create a function that will accept the rest of the, the field. Yes. Um, let's use a simple example. Let's say I define here. So I'm going to first assume we have a function that expects foo and bar. And then I want to take another function named, or maybe I should do it the other way around. Uh, function which expects a record named foo. I'm doing this the right way. No, yeah, let's, let's actually do it there. All right, this may take a little while, but it's worth showing. We have a function named g, which expects, say, just foo. So one thing you can do is you can say, for example, um, sorry, and I have a record. Yeah, I gotta do some line contortions here. Um, so Dolph pro uh, provides support for things like um, merging two records and also projecting out subsets of fields, right? So for example, if I have the record, you know, let x equals foo equals abc bar equals df. I can do things like call g on x dot, and then I only want the field foo in this case, right? And let's just see, not a function. Uh, okay, why? Oh, sorry, g is it's not a function. One second. Neither of these is actually. There we go. So it basically says this is what it would be. And then you can also do things like um, if I want to take a, a record and I can merge it. So I can say like call f on the record foo equals abc. And then the syntax. So doll provides both support for ASCII operators and Unicode operators. Sorry. Yeah. DEF. So they're basically using, oh sorry, F is not a function either. Thank you, type system, for catching that. There we go. There we go. And so you can basically use that to slice, undice, and merge records to get these X shape you want. If, so even though everything is explicitly typed, it provides tools to um, adapt records of different shapes together. Yeah. Is it possible to dump like a configuration to JSON or some other format? Yes, there is a doll to JSON utility. So let's actually do that. So doll to JSON. 
to uninstall it. Okay. Um, there is one, and it basically would convert it in exactly the way you expect. I just haven't installed it at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, along those same lines, is anybody using this for um, trying to normalize legacy configurations like you got some horrible XML graph from uh, 10 years ago uh, and you'd like to rewrite it and provide XML for this? And, so there is no XML integration. There is JSON and YAML, and that is actually, I think, the most common use case of DAL. Actually, is uh, basically pro providing a nicer way to generate JSON. So like you have large repetitive JSON, and you just want to write all configuration, which is much less condensed and much less error prone and typed, and then you just uh, at the last minute convert it to JSON before reading it into your program. Uh, YAML too. Uh, YAML is of course a superset of JSON, but it has YAML specific integration as well. Seems like it'd be really useful for confirmation templates. Yes, that is such a so <laughs> the most common request. So yeah, you obviously get through JSON, you get you can do like cloud formation, you can do um, Terraform because HDL is a superset of JSON. Um, I, people have been using it for Kubernetes as well. Uh, it's very commonly used in ops, especially because uh, in ops you really care about safety because you're deploying mission critical things. And DAL is typed, it's not train complete, it's strongly normalizing, and it has lots of other features like you know, you can actually protect these imports of URLs and files um, with uh, what are called semantic integrity checks to make sure that they don't change out from underneath you uh, and when your build. So uh, you have all sorts of safety protections exactly for that sort of scenario. Yeah. Do you have the uh, ability to pass in parameters from the Haskell call so when you're marshalling? Yes, you can. So that's a cool question. Let's, let's do this. Um, input auto. Let's say I want to just take a would be a good example. Let's just import the natural slash even function from doll and say give me a function from natural to bool. So yeah, you can import functions. So some functions from there. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, That's, there's no Unicode. Okay, there we go. Negative. Yeah. Up to true right f of three equals. So you can import you can import monomorphic functions from doll that are not higher order into Haskell. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. What software are you using for your new code? Oh, uh, I just memorized the escape sequences. <laughs> 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 I mean, if you don't know Unicode, you can use DAL format. You just write out the ASCII and DAL format will convert it to Unicode for you and format the file. <laughs> That's time. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>